I opened uh, Welcome to this video and uh, to get to uh, Dunstanborough Castle we parked up in the small fishing village of Craster and uh, there was a couple of benefits to using the car park. One, there was toilet facilities and two, there was this amazing food van called Piper's Pitch and they'd got haggis, bacon, square sausage mm. and when we come back from the shoot we'd got this amazing smell now mm, bacon mm, sausage so Helen had a uh, sausage uh, sarnie and I had a bacon sarnie and a drink but uh, oh, well tasty can't recommend that place enough uh, so we will be back to park there next time we visit uh, Craster and Dunstanborough Castle. So, uh, from Craster, we had a little walk around Craster uh, itself, and uh, then we made our way up one and a half mile of um, amazing coastline before we got to the castle. Let's see uh, how we got on. Good morning, and uh, we're still on the Northumberland coast, and uh, we've come to Dunstrabur Castle today. Dunsterborough Castle, maybe. Uh, it's very windy. Uh, we've got bright sunshine. I didn't really want bright sunshine today, although it's better than yesterday when it absolutely chucked it down uh, with rain. So uh, we're on another rocky beach. This beach here. It's absolutely uh, amazing, the, the rock formations, the rock ledges, the rock layers that are on here just give uh, so much foreground interest. Uh, and the great thing about these rocks is, so far they're not slippy, they're anti-slip rocks. That's fantastic because there's no chance of falling over. And it means we can venture further out as well, maybe, nearer to the sea. Um, I've took the first shot, which I've put up now. It's probably a bit of a calendar shot, if anything. Uh, blue sky, um, but the rocks, uh, yeah, the rocks are fascinating. But to make the subject interesting, we've got to bring other things, other elements into the shot. So when I move down there and start doing handheld shots, I'm gonna bring the rock pools into the foreground. So we're gonna have rock pools, layers of rocks, and then the castle itself from this side of the beach. Uh, once we've took a few shots here, we're gonna move uh, north of the castle, then we'll be taking images into the sun, and we'll probably end up with a silhouette of the castle. That's the plan at the minute, but plans can change. Right, let's go uh, handheld. So just down here, we've got some uh, very small uh, rock pools. And I suppose really, I ought to have the polarizer on. But let's see how we go. There's a nice big rock pool there. So I'm gonna make my way down to that. Ooh, that looks like a slippy rock. I spoke too soon. Here's a very nice uh, rock pool. Very nice, that. That forms a uh, very nice, uh, we could do with a tripod really. That makes very nice uh, foreground composition. Rock pool, layer of rocks, and then the castle behind. Now I think the, uh, 
I think the tide's coming in at the minute, looking at this. So uh, we might not be too long down here. Okay, I'm back. I've got the uh, polarizer on now and uh, just taking the glare off the water, saturating the colors. I'll show you a couple of shots here and I'm just turning the um, polarizer, bleh, polarizer round until I get the desired effect. And because I'm going portrait and landscape, I keep having to make sure I turn the polarizer around to get the maximum effect. So the polarizer is now full on for this shot. I'm gonna go wide and include some of the sea. Yes, that's looking uh, pretty good. Let's just see if we can find another. The problem we've got, because the sun's out, is the, uh, the shadow. I'm casting a shadow onto the, uh, onto the rock pool itself. So I can't quite go as wide as I'd like to. Um, but I certainly can't put 14 to 24 uh, lens on. That's quite nice there. I like that. Let's go. Uh, let's go vertical. And change the uh, change the polarizer again. That's quite nice. That the foreground in that one. That's probably the best one so far. Let's go down low. Let's see what we can get. Uh, go down too low, and the castle disappears gradually move up. Somebody's parked uh, a white van right in the middle of where the castle is so I'm gonna have to clone that out. That's, that's just so annoying isn't it? Why would you park a white van just there? Jesus! Now as we get nearer to the sea these rocks get uh, do start to get a bit uh, a bit slippy. But then we start to get these uh, those rock pools. We've now got rock pools with the uh, dirty black seaweed in. But handheld is definitely working. Uh, working here. Right. Let's uh, move a bit forward.
at this point, this uh, amazing cloud came over and it forced me to change uh, my composition. So now we'd got the rocky foreground, we'd got the castle, and we'd got this amazing cloud that was taking over the sky. So we'd gone from blue sky, boring blue sky, to something really interesting up in the sky. So this made me tilt my camera up and adjust the composition. Uh, and it really looked dramatic. However, I did miss an opportunity because when I looked in the rock pools, this awesome cloud was reflecting in the rock pools, but I couldn't get down low enough to take the shot um, without actually laying in the rock pools. And I wasn't going to do that. What I needed was a flippy screen. If I had a flippy screen, I could have put the camera down low and got that amazing picture. So I missed that, which is unfortunate. However, I've just uh, upgraded my camera. So I've upgraded to a camera uh, that has got a flippy screen. And I'm just in the process of setting this up at the minute. So it, it's the, the Nikon D850, um, which is an awesome machine. Okay, and I'll talk more about this in a future video. But uh, in this instance, the flippy screen um, would have got me what would have been probably the best shot uh, from the visit to Northumberland, but that's just the way it goes. So, uh, as I say, I will talk about this in future videos, not for now. Um, I am in the doghouse though, um, because Helen saw me playing with this and said, oh, that's different, it's got a flippy screen looked at it and uh, realized what I'd, I'd bought and uh, yeah I, I instantly went to the dog house however when I started to play with it and uh, I took a picture because you can take a picture just by touching the screen the camera focuses and takes a shot she turned and said I want to use that <laughs> no no I don't think so I'll let you have a go but no no Anyway, that's for, we'll talk about this more in a future video. Um, at the moment, I'm going to transition uh, from the Nikon D810 to the D850. Uh, I need to get this set up um, the way I want it to be set up. Uh, and I'm just waiting for an L bracket as well for it. And, uh, but that's for the future. Anyway, let's get back to this video. Okay, we made our way closer to the castle and this panoramic view uh, was right in front of me. So I took a pano shot and when I got home and processed it, I'd got two couples in the shot, one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. And I found when I looked at this image, both couples were pulling your eyes away from the main subject, which was the castle. So I decided to do a, a crop and we cropped out both couples and just leaving the castle there in the middle which is okay we've got interest in the sky as well that cloud's still hanging around uh, and then I thought what about putting um, one of the couples back in so I put the couple on the left hand side back into the image and uh, I think I prefer this shot putting that couple back in there they're not as much as a distraction as the two couples and also every time you put people into an image it gives that image scale you can understand how big that landscape is so um, what would you have done here which one do you prefer do you prefer the the pano with the two couples in the pano with no couples in or the one that i chose just having the couple in the left hand side of the image or would you put the people in the right hand side of the image let me know in the comments in the bottom because uh, this gave me quite a dilemma we move around next to where all the classic shots are taken of this castle which are the rocks on the beach leading up to the castle and uh, the cliff uh, face 
Now, I did try and walk on the rocks and they were very slippy. Plus, the wind was twice as powerful around this corner. And uh, as you can see, I didn't record any sound here. But what we was waiting for here was the light to break through um, from the right hand side to light up that castle on the hill. Um, it never happened, unfortunately. That cloud cover stayed with us. So I did take uh, some shots from this point. It was a bit sheltered here uh, than being exposed up on, on top or even on the beach. On the beach it was even windier. So I took some long exposures and uh, you'll see those images in the, in the slideshow at the end. So the composition I uh, decided on was the, we've got some like folded rocks there on the left hand side in the foreground and they look really nice surrounded by some of these uh, boulders and then up on the right we've got the castle and then we've got the cliff um, snaking round down towards uh, into the sea and then we had we did have some uh, reasonably dramatic sky particularly when uh, I processed the images into black and white. Another awesome uh, location on the Northumberland coast and uh, yet another place I'll return back to. And throughout these videos, when I look back through them, um, it's given me a lot of places to go back to, but also certain parts to go back to. So I'd go back here, certainly, where the, the deeper rock pools were, and I'd go back and try and get that classic shot that I missed out due to the weather. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you like this content, consider subscribing to the channel, sharing the video, giving the video a like, popping a comment in the bottom, particularly about that pano, which, uh, which one would you have chosen? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end the video here. We'll have a quick slideshow of other images that I captured, and uh, you'll see a preview of the next video, which is the last Northumberland video, sadly, and it's uh, St Mary's uh, Lighthouse uh, during sunset and the tide going out, which is my favourite conditions. The tide going out, it's so safe. Anyway, uh, slideshow, preview of next um, video, and I'll see you later.